That's fun. This is a Webley Fosbury semi-automatic revolver. It was made a long time ago. You've seen videos about this. You've seen people shoot it, but what you haven't done is seen somebody take one all the way apart just to replace a screw that's missing on the outside. So let's get going. possibility that these grips are um, repop because the escutcheons are not set far enough down in and that screw appears to be a little bit too short so we're either going to make a longer screw or deal with these escutcheon holes we're gonna get these out of the way here leave that screw up there unlike a lot of these this is not the first time I've taken this particular gun apart so I'm not going to be really, um, I don't have to fumble with it too much. So this is the screw that's correct. That's the screw that's correct. And since we shot the intro, I'm going to tell you that I reversed the positions of these screws just to see whether or not the screw that was in the back one in the front. You're not seeing things. I just wanted to make sure. We pulled, up, um, we pulled up some really tight camera angles just to make sure, and I'm not dreaming. This screw and that screw are not the same. So what we'll probably wind up having to do is refabricate a smaller version of this because the head size isn't right, nothing's right. We're gonna go take a look at what it's gonna take to make these true screws appear right. The head's all messed up on this one, okay. So we're there. Now, this particular gun, the way they did this, the side plates push through. So this side plate comes off, and you can see here the groove that the slide runs in, and then this side plate comes off, and there's the groove for the other side. So these two side plates grab all of this stuff and give it the ability to slide back and forth. So the first thing we're looking at is this gigantic arm right here and this flat spring. This is what pushes the top part forward and ca catching all that. So to take this off, Bruno had to do a, uh, an animation on this gun. So we've had it apart and it's been conserved already. So when we get down inside this, we'll show you a photograph of it while it was dirty And we've since boiled all the Glock and the Zardoz out of the inside of this thing, and we're kind of moving on. So I'm just going to take this plunger, retract it with my finger, and the top and the bottom half of the gun are going to separate into two pieces. So the first thing we note is this catch right here on the safety lever. When the safety is moved up and down, that catch engages the back side of this hammer spring stud and locks the gun ever so slightly to the rear. We'll demonstrate that. And then that, that uh, disconnects the trigger so you can't drop the hammer, the gun goes nowhere. This is not a wipe on, wipe off safety. This is not a safety on a 1911. This is deliberate. I'm going into the combo bunker and safing my weapon. I'm going back out on the battlefield and making my weapon live again. It's like a C96, like a broom handle this is a conscious effort to turn this thing on and off. Okay, we'll put that up there. We'll put that up there, right? So we can tear the rest of the bottom apart. There's not much here. There's this particular arm, and you can see the action of that spring there. And I'm going to tell you, that is a vicious leaf spring. I mean vicious. You can hear it popping. Um, we're going to have to control the energy of that as that comes apart. Um, and then the rest of it is pretty simple. This is just a, a rocker. But here's what makes the Fosbury unique. And let me get this into a spot here with something black up against the bottom of it. This particular spring-loaded detent here, 
this spring-loaded detent is going to snap around here we go thank you is going to snap around the sear stud so the sear is sticking down right here there's the sear right there this is pushed upwards so there's your half cock notch and there's your full cock notch so when this is over the top of that you push up on the sear right here I'm just going to show you. It's right at the end of the screwdriver. We'll tear this the rest of the way down. You'll see it better. But you push up on that, and that allows this to fall. And the only place where it's in a position to push is right when it's fully locked forward. It's the only place where this and this line up over the top of each other. And I'll show you how that works here in a moment. So we'll go ahead and finish tearing this down. The trigger just pops out. And here's that spring-loaded part I was talking about. The last time I went after this... This pin was put in and pinned and ground over flush. There is the spot, beginning gunsmiths, where you stop taking stuff apart, and this is where it is. This was obviously never designed to be taken apart, but there is a spring and a stud up inside this. This is free to rock back and forth on a very, very fine leaf spring. Boy, there's a spring I don't want to have to make again. Let's see if we can extract that. If I remember right, this actually doesn't stay in there very hard. Now, maybe we can push it from behind. Oh, baby, that's a small hole. Tap on the end of this extemporaneous punch here. And we can see then that that spring is beginning to lift right there. It's lifting, it's sliding out on this little tube right here. So we should then be able to extricate this the rest of the way out. And that's the the feather spring then that rolls the trigger back up into engagement forward all right this stud here has kind of a lozenge on it it has a surface this way and it has a surface this way that engages in the zigzags and we'll talk about that a little bit later on how this cylinder is actually rolled and how it's locked because this is not like any other webley you've ever seen some engineering changes were made. This is a very, very difficult spring to get a spring cramp on. Um, so I've decided to just knock this post out and let it pop. Now that piece popped and the pin wound up underneath this bench block here. And then I seem to remember that it's just easier to control the energy as this comes out and then this thing will literally fall apart. So I think it's easier to do it that way than it was to try to grab this spring in a spring cramp because I'm gonna tell you what, I can barely flex this thing with my fingers. This spring is as hard as a rock. So that's out, that's out. The stirrup is another one of those ground in pins, the stirrup here, that pulls forward on this. Um, so I'm not gonna take this apart like I said, we got, all the, we got all the Glock out of it before. So the arrangement for that is this right here, where that spring is actually pulling um, forward on it this way, and it's making it up like that. I'm sorry. I'll lay it all out here. When we get it up inside the gun, we'll do a layout. But anyway, that's the whole bottom. Um, we've got the bottom taken apart now. I could take this lanyard swivel out. That's just drive this pin, drive it out. We don't really need to do that here because it's not necessary to observe the function of the gun. So now we get into the top. The top's a little different kettle of fish from your standard, um, your standard revolver here. When the top is opened, this will come out unless it's being held in by this upper plunger, depending upon where it was. Depressing this plunger and lifting the cylinder out, there's nothing grabbing it. Typically on a Webley, it's being held in with an arrangement down here that you have to fold out of the way to unlock it and pull it out. But the, Fos the, 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 the Fosbury is held in index differently than the average gun is. There's a locking spring right here. Yeah, bring it on it. There's a locking spring right here. And this locking spring is there's another spring up in here. And in that surface right there, when you close the gun, this picks up. So when you push on a button, it will allow that detent system to just pull the cylinder straight out. 
Pretty interesting how the heck that works. There's a very small pin right here. We drive that pin, this whole thing just explodes into like four different springs. We'll grab that in a moment, but it's gonna be much easier to do if we do not have the frame attached to the side of the gun. Standard Webley, come in, give it a little tap. Uh, it fell out there, there we go. This is unusual in that we have already shot this gun extensively. We got a lot of film on it, and I know it works. I already did most of the refurb except for that one screw. We'll go back and get that. This stud pushes out, pretty, pretty standard Webley stuff. And then that comes out, and then there is a spring-loaded gizmo in here that gives you the ability to automatically eject the cartridges. So that little finger, that little finger gizmo pushes on that and gives you your ejection. Okay, that sits over there. We're going to leave the parts for the upper separate from the lower. What have we got here so far? All right, this thing got a little bit dirty. Let me go in here. Hang on a minute. Slightly smaller punch. Okay. Now, now, this center pin, this spring winds up. So I found it's actually easier to push in on this center pin and then take it apart while the spring is compressed. I don't know why. It just seems to be easier. There is a reason why I'm holding my hand over it because eventually this thing is going to explode into two pieces. Let that out. Okay, there we go. Guard this spring with your life. Those of you that have ever tried to bring a Webley back from the dead, this Webley ejector spring is made out of very unusual diameter wire. It is an unusual diameter spring. Maybe I'm full of it, but I don't think I am. The star pops out of the center, is held in alignment with a single, um, right here, a single pin holding it in alignment. Pretty simple, except there are no teeth on the star wheel. It's the oddest thing you've ever seen. And now that just leaves you a lot of metal encasing a lot of holes. This thing has some pretty major power. Uh, 265 grain projectile going about 780 feet per second. It adds up to about a 1911, 15 years before you get your hands on a 1911. And it would give you six rounds about as fast as you could pull the trigger. This was not a bad deal back in the day. Full automatics with the ability to load from a mag that got a little bit, that, that made sense, and we went off in that direction. But for its time, this was not a half bad piece of gear. We just did a camera break there, um, just because we needed to do a, Bruno's frantically waving at me, battery's about to die, it's cool. This strut right here, I got this thing upside down, let me turn it right side up. This strut, this frame, this back strap, all of this, one machining. It's, this thing's incredible. I did find out the last time I took this gun apart that the strut, the main, string, the main spring hammer right here, can be bent relatively easily, just lightly enough that it puts some scratch marks. Let me see if I can get the light right here so you can see them. Right there. There's some scratch marks right there and it held the gun up just that little bit. So, Every action you have, and I bent the gun with a two ounce ball ping, as we've said before. Um, so I'm going to figure out where we're going to go first. We're going to take this mainspring off and just and just get the mainspring and its tension out of the way. I've taken the upper and put it in the universal work holding system because I need both fingers. I've also noticed in the monitor that the background's a little busy. So let me tidy up the background here a little bit. There we go. Now we got all this contrast on this towel, right? Okay. This spring right here is thin, has a complex profile, and will cost you about $250 to have me make. So we don't want to break this spring. We don't want to try to pop this spring out under compression. We don't want to do a few things. The other thing we don't want to do is we don't want to twist that stirrup right there. 
We don't want to twist that. So how do you take it apart? This is a tool called a spring cramp. And what a spring cramp is going to do is allow us to trap this spring at full cock and lift it off without any compression. The problem we're going to have here is, is that this standard muzzle loader main spring spring cramp that I have doesn't have enough throw. So we'll cock the hammer, take it to full cock. That makes the spring flat. We'll fly in here, drop this cramp on, and we'll tighten down. Hang on a minute, I'll get my fingers out of the way in just a second. We'll tighten down on this and then drop the hammer. Now once we've got the hammer dropped, you can see now that entire spring is just rocking there and it's held in, there's a pin up underneath it. Okay, so we'll come in and very gently lift We'll very gently lift the tail of this out of that hole here. There we go. That pops up. So you can see that stud sticking down right there went into that hole. And then this unhooks. And now we have the spring trapped as a cassette in a way that we can put it back on again and stand a fighting chance of actually being able to use it again. There's a spring here that pushes on that upper catch. This spring can just be lifted out of the way and it has a, I got to have my hands in front of it because I don't want to go try to find it on the other side of the room. There it is, right there. That spring pops out and it's held in place. You can see this little slight detent right there that holds it up in a spot on the recoil shield. We can then flip this over and take this all the way through screw out. That screw out of the way. And that's the barrel lock right there. It has to be brought backwards and out. So this particular lock engages over the top of this bump in the back end of the barrel, and that's how it locks the barrel shut. And by the way, a lot of these Webleys go out of time because they bend. Not these Webleys, but Webleys go out of time because they bend right here. And when this bends down, the cylinder base pin appears to move up and they go out of time that way. Just a factoid. Now how I unbend that, you're not allowed to see that because you won't, you won't like how I do it. All right, now if I remember right, this entire assembly here has to come through the frame that way. It can't come through, I'm sorry, it can't come through the frame that way because this is too big. It's got to come out this way. And as I remember, I think I had to take the sear out first. All right, there we go. It was mud catting on me. Sorry, I had to fight it a little bit. There's the sear spring, and that's the thing. If that spring isn't, isn't strong enough, this sear will bounce out of half cock engagement, and if you snap the gun shut and that sear spring isn't hard enough, you might get an accidental discharge. I'm probably not the first guy to notice that, um, and I sure as heck probably won't be the last. Okay, so then the rest of this is... That had to come all the way up and that slides out. Now I got the hammer out and the frame is now stripped with the exception of this recoil shield. So if we look carefully, we can see that this is formed into a dovetail. There's a dovetail cut here and we're gonna, I'm trying, there it is. There's a dovetail cut there. So don't try to take this recoil shield out that way. It's gotta come out towards the camera so in that regard, we're going back up on top of the work holding system because I got to hang on to this while I tap it. We've done a reposition and I've got it up in the vise now. And we'll pull that, that retaining screw out. Now this thing is as soft as a piece of butter. So you got to be real careful how you hit it. And I'm just going to set this brass hammer here and massage this thing out. Okay, now I gotta go to a, um, a long punch and just very gently hit it right there. I know I'm in the way, here we go. Yep, hit the floor there, Bruno grabbed it. So that recoil shield comes out. And the nice thing about this recoil shield is if this gun got corroded or messed up, and the headspace went a little long, you could replace this piece. <laughs> Good luck finding one.
Well, here it is in its magnificent glory. This is a B-roll shot that I took before we cleaned it the first time, and you can see the mong all over it. Here it is laid out after it was cleaned, and I just want you to see this. I'm holding on this and talking over this still picture so that you have time to freeze it and study it if you need to, if for some strange reason you ever needed to look down inside of a, inside of a Fosbury. Okay, let's go over now and talk about how this thing works semi-automatically. Okay, this is an unusual camera angle, but I had to get it because I have the parts of this thing stacked. There's a Z-axis to it um, because I've got the trigger sitting down where it should be, but I've got all this stuff mounted on the outside of the gun to give you some idea of what's going on here. And it's actually pretty simple. This is the sear, and the sear has a spring which goes into this hole here. So it's spring loaded that way, or if it's down, there's the half cock notch, or if it's back, there's all the way, right? So as you cock this thing, this cocks, that cocks, okay. This surface right here on the trigger, when rotated up, can push up on this, and when it pushes up, it causes it to pivot around. Now note that it can only do this when the gun's at battery. The moment the gun is not at battery, this is disconnected. So, if you, I got, I got it all kind of cobbled together here. If you push up on this, this will push up on that. This will cause the hammer to fall, will discharge the cartridge, and will bring this all the way to the rear and the trigger is rotated all the way up. Now remember that this is spring-loaded, okay? So that's back down here. I'm sorry, it'll be like this when it comes all the way back and I'll tell you how that happens here in a minute. This will come all the way back forward again and it will push forward on this and come all the way into battery here. And then when you turn the trip when you turn the trigger loose, it will snap around behind it bank and it'll be ready for the next shot. So this will be folded up until you turn the trigger loose and it'll snap down behind that and it's ready to push up again. Now, on one of the side plates, there's a stud sticking up. That stud right here. When this is in position on the other side of the gun, that stud's over here. So what that stud's going to do, it's going to bear on this post right here. So as the gun comes to the rear, that stud will be sticking down over there on the other side. And as it comes to the rear, it, let's just say my finger's that stud, and it will pivot around that and it will cause the hammer to go into full cock. It's that simple. Um, Bruno's doing an animation on this thing. It's not done yet, but over at B Animations, you'll see it up. I'm pretty sure when CN Arsenal does this, it'll be in theirs. We would use it in this episode. However, I've got the actual hardware. Um, either way, there are several excellent diagrams of this that came off this particular weapon that are available to be seen over there. So that's pretty much it. Let me get this thing respotted. I'm gonna lay it out on a towel and show you to show you what it looks like clean, and then we'll go from there. So having done all that, I've laid this thing out in its functional parts groups. We have the barrel. I took that lock apart. So you have, let me, let me take this out of the way here so you can see it. This is that spring-loaded tab that moved up and down. This spring pushes down on that and up on the lock button, and then there's a pin that holds it all the way through. We had the inside the cylinder. Now I can put the cylinder back. Had the nose, that spring that I told you, don't lose that spring, and then the star. And then this is the finger with the little spring-loaded gizmo on it right there. Hang on a minute. There's a little spring-loaded gizmo on this here. You gotta remember that, all right? Uh, let's keep moving backwards. Recoil shield, recoil shield retention screw. This is the top lever, um, the lock, the top lock spring. Again, I don't know if I got all of this nomenclature right. I'm just calling it by what I think it does. This is the hammer, the sear, the sear spring, the only coil spring on the entire gun 
right there. <laughs> and he says that, and there's a great big one. Said, eh, never mind. The mainspring, um, this is the action spring, the action spring lever coming around the corner after we get out of the main body of the gun. Then we have the lower. That pin goes in there. This is the inside of the safety. The outside of the safety, note the square hole. There's a square drive on that. Um, this is the, uh, the side plate that goes on the left side of the gun, the side plate that goes on the right. These two hollow threaded studs are for the action screws, and there is a little alignment tit that goes right in these two little alignment holes right here. So when you put these in, don't beat on these things to make them go in. They have to, tabs have to line up and drop through. We've got the correct size screw, and then we've got the screw with the big head. And the only thing I'm going to do to modify this screw is chuck in the lathe very quickly and turn the diameter of this head down to equal that, and it'll be right back. Other than that, a little bit of trim out, and uh, this thing is uh, going to be ready to go back together again in um, pretty good. I'm going to lay them out here and tell you that assembly is the reverse order of disassembly. This is another gun I got given in a bag, and I'm going to tell you what, turnabout is fair play, so yeah, I can't do that. Let's put this back together again and then we'll do a proper outro. What the? At least I'm back in the. No! 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 Ah, uh, hell no. Webley Fosbury semi-automatic revolver and as always it's been a distinct pleasure to be down the rabbit hole with you guys and take a look at something you don't get to see every day finally Bruno, you got me. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You got me.